enthusiasm for this project has probably once again made me just a little bit too ambitious. It is 9.15 a.m. on Saturday, August 21st, and I have until September 10th to submit this project, completed, images and everything ready to go um, to the Word and Wise magazine. So I am probably a little bit behind where I need to be because all I have so far is a half completed design. I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to pull off what I want to do, how I'm going to pull it off in the short amount of time that I have to do it, but we're just going to go for it and see what happens. <laughs> the theme for this submission is witch lore, and for me, I when I heard that theme, I just immediately had this image of this very like shadowy figure. Uh, but still somehow very decadent. So my goal is to make a very wide tatted collar and then attach some sort of uh, like cape or vest hybrid sort of thing. It's all very nebulous in my head and as usual my design process is pretty chaotic. Uh, so what we end up with may be something completely different from what I have planned. Here we go. So I'm starting with this piece that I already had um, in my like kind of cast off ideas. Um, I call it my bag of ends. <laughs> this curve shape is going to be really nice to help it just lay against the body really well. And even though this piece is fairly wide already, I do want to add a little bit more to it. So one thing I've started doing with my designs is sketching pieces out before I attempt tatting them. Uh, in especially in layered pieces like this where I, I have multiple layers going on, it just kind of helps me visualize things and see where I want that final shape to kind of end up. So after I sketch it, then of course I have to make it to make sure that it actually works. This process can be very frustrating as I usually end up making pieces several times over, working my way through variations until I get a result I'm happy with. After going through several attempts at working this bottom row in one continuous piece, I eventually realized that it was just not going to give me the shape that I wanted. So I ended up settling on this design where all of the in-between points are actually individual motifs. As tedious as it was, I ended up being really glad that I did this because I later needed to adjust the shape a little bit and this made it a lot easier to do so. At this point, I decided that I wanted to add a velvet ribbon to the top to kind of stabilize the piece, especially because I plan to add a lot of weight in terms of beads and embellishments. I always like to plan out all of the sparkly bits that I think I might add before I start actually tatting. For this project, I went with black thread, of course, these black rainbow seed beads, and a variety of faceted crystal beads in this dark silvery kind of finish. I also knew I wanted to use these silver dagger charms from TierraCast and I grabbed some gunmetal chain to tie it all together. I always feel like having a variety of textures and finishes really helps to take a piece from just being a little bit of lace to being something really more extraordinary. Now the real work begins. As usual, I chose to work the seed beads directly into the tatting. Because I have so many elements going into this piece, I kept the placement on this pretty sparse.
After finishing the first row, I decided to go ahead and sew in the ribbon since it was a bit easier to handle before the piece got too large. I kind of regretted doing that later, but it is what it is. Then it took a whole week to get the second row completed, and then to finally add all those in-between motifs added took a whole other week. Once I had all of the rows on, I pretty quickly realized that the ribbon placement was just not going to work, so I removed it and added a fourth row along the top to bring the collar up higher and putting some of that chain in between the rows just to kind of tie it all together. I really like the way that this turned out with the chain being kind of attached between the two pieces, and I'm probably going to keep that in mind for future designs. I also realized that the bottom edge was spreading out a bit too much and it just was not going to lay the way that I wanted. So I ended up removing four of the motifs and yes, that did hurt a little bit to have to cut them out, uh, but it made a big difference in how the piece fit and I think it also added some visual interest to the overall shape that it really needed. My preferred method for adding the rest of the beads is definitely not the fastest or easiest method, but I love the results so I keep doing it. By sewing the beads on individually, I can really manipulate the tatted work and create a more cohesive design by being able to place those beads in areas I wouldn't be able to if I just tatted them straight in. I also added these gunmetal beads just to give it a little bit extra depth and tie in that chain color a little better. Even though I had already steam blocked the piece, I decided to wet block it overnight. Steam blocking is really nice for making things flat and even but wet blocking will actually stretch the fibers out. And I think it made a really big difference in how the piece fit, especially around the shoulder area. With the help of my lovely assistant, I think I have managed to drape kind of the idea that I had in mind. So now I get to figure out how to actually attach all of these pieces together. And I think I have just enough fabric left over to possibly make a skirt to go underneath um, just to give it some more layering. So we will see. This is gonna be fun because I have never draped a garment before and I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I think my plan of attack is I am going to take the tatted piece off and then um, even out some of the things with uh, the fabric and then possibly hand baste things into place and then put the tatting piece back on and then hand baste over that and then go ahead and sew the whole thing down. Uh, 
I think. We'll see. <laughs> that plan did actually end up working pretty well. I decided to sew the fabric to the ribbon along the top of the piece to stabilize it first using a very tiny backstitch and being sure to catch all of the tatted lace as well as the ribbon in any of the areas where they were layered together so that it would be uh, held together more as one cohesive piece. Then I trimmed the top edge of the fabric just below the top edge of the ribbon. This wasn't as clean a finish as I would have liked, but it worked well enough for now, and I've definitely got some ideas for how to do it differently in the future. For the rest of the piece, I sewed the tatting down along the edges using this very tiny whip stitch that just barely catches the back edge of the tatted stitches. Again, really tedious, but the result is a nearly invisible seam, and it also allowed me to create these cutouts in the front, um, which I really liked. And finally, time for the finishing touches, adding the dagger charms and the chains and all of the fun things that really tie the piece together. I also decided to kind of distress the edge of the fabric a little bit just by taking my scissors and making these little drag cuts along the edge. I did not in fact have quite enough fabric left over to make the whole skirt, but I did have some extra linen that I used to make this very hasty split skirt. The corset is a project that I made earlier this summer and I had hoped to add matching tatted pieces to the front, but I just did not have enough time. This project was such a challenge and I definitely learned a lot along the way. Despite all of the frustrations and the stress of having such a short time frame to work in, I absolutely love how it came out. I just love the way that it fits and the way that it moves is so stunning and I can't wait to keep playing with this idea of combining tatted lace with fantasy garments. Mm -hmm.